So these are thoughts inspired by page 13 of Isabel Wilkerson's cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. So uh, in case you are not aware, or in case you didn't guess, this book is really about how screwed up the uh, political economic system is um, in the United States, and presumably elsewhere in the world. But anyway, um, when we look at terrible and pathetic governments around the world, we often scoff at them, and uh, it's, it's not without reason. Some of those reasons are good. Uh, we, can, we can often look at ourselves and say, this is America. For crying out loud, we don't do that kind of stuff over here. We're not evil. We're better than that. We're much too polite for that. Not to mention it makes more work for us if uh, we're noticeably sinister, right? Um, however, if you think it can happen here, you're actually living in denial. Hate to break it to you, but, you know, our system is kind of rotten. I remember the Bush years where I was deemed not a team player, to say the least, for my questioning of the Iraq War. I was labeled a traitor and accused of supporting Saddam Hussein or Osama bin Laden. You know, uh, basically any type of, you know, commie type of language was thrown in my direction. Even though it really had nothing to do with the Iraq War itself, you know. Uh, whether or not I was a communist was actually immaterial to <laughs> my critiques of the war. But, you know, no brains, no headaches, right? Of course, it turned out I was actually right about the Iraq War. It was disastrous from practically every conceivable vantage point, and it actually even made George W. Bush, one of the biggest boneheads on the planet, less popular than even I thought he was going to become. I think he had like a 22% approval rating, uh, which was partly inspired by the economy, of course, but I think people were also fed up with these wars that were going on under his watch. And, uh, of course, a lot of people profited from that money-wise. And, you know, we're supposed to look the other way when all these profiteers are lining up to take a little slice of the pie. Even if it's at taxpayer expense, somehow these people still get respect. Even to this day, like, even when Joe Biden is... Uh, sure thing in the White House. He's filling his cabinet full of these war profiteers and these war hawks and these corporatists and all that. But, you know, a lot of Democrats are going to give him a pass because he has a D by his name instead of a freaking R. So, you know, he's, of course, going to be our next Obama-esque savior. Uh, also, ironically, it's increasingly difficult for anyone to deny the obvious about Donald Trump, uh, the Republican establish establishment has actually been brazenly traitorous itself. And look, when I say this, I'm not a partisan hack, you know, I don't solely attack Donald Trump. That's not really my interest, it's not my game. I wouldn't even be good at that. You know, if, if I tried to hold back criticisms of Democrats, I think they would still end up spilling out the side of my mouth because I hate both parties. I hate the two-party system. Uh, they're, I don't even know how people could vote for a lot of these people. Uh, I've spent a good deal of time criticizing Democrats, and often for the exact same reasons I criticize Republicans. Objectively speaking, there is considerable policy overlap, and even in a lot of cases, their personalities and talking points are the same. However, when it was revealed that there was a kidnapping plot against Michigan's governor, my governor, Gretchen Whitmer, I have to admit that was kind of a conservative-slash-Republican thing. Sure, some right-wingers tried to claim these perpetrators were leftists, but let's be real here. Personally, I don't know a single leftist who would want to kidnap and execute a politician merely for instituting public health safety and hygiene measures. Uh, that's that's not really a consistent leftist talking point that I've seen. Uh, I haven't seen it online that much anyway. That's That's been a 
conservative slash Republican thing, in my experience. In fact, that seems to be something they're kind of, you know, wearing like a badge of pride, you know, that they don't wear masks and shit like that. Like, okay, it's not exactly an accomplishment. And of course, a lot of these same people are like, oh, I'm... I'm not afraid of COVID-19 and stuff like that. Well, well, moron, it's it's not based on whether you're courageous or not. A virus is not going to say, "Oh, that's a brave man over there. I'm not going to, you know, get him sick." Uh, that's not how this shit works, dummy. But, but anyway, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here, of course. Uh, many are speculating that the kidnapping idea was inspired partly by Trump's tweets of in all caps, LIBERATE MICHIGAN, LIBERATE MICHIGAN. Um, apparently liberating it from intelligence and common decency and uh, common sense. Because if you look at a lot of other countries, or at least a handful of other countries at the very least, some of them are doing better, even considerably better than the United States. Some of them have basically defeated the virus already, even before the vaccine has been fully unleashed. Also, it seems these uh, terrorists in question were frequently attending anti-lockdown protests, and there is at least some sheriff named Darleaf, of all things, who seems to think the kidnapping murder plot was just fine. Uh, severely downplayed it and all that. You know, all these are things that if a leftist had done... You know, and if a leftist had advocated it, uh, you'd never hear the end of it. Um, but anyway, why would anyone think that this was like a normal thing? Is it because they're Al Qaeda or Antifa or a similar kind of boogeyman? Nope. You don't. You don't really have to look in that direction, because they believe that's what it takes to quote unquote make America great again. You know, you have to. You have to put aside. Uh, any question other than, you know, what makes big money for corporations and what makes Donald Trump look good. And uh, a lot of these conservatives, for whatever reason, they think, you know, um, America's doing just fine under Donald Trump. These people are authoritarian, plain and simple, and there have been plenty of overtly Nazi-like stories emerging, too. These include some forced sterilizations, in an ICE detention center. Although, to be fair, there were similar stories coming out of California prisons before Trump. So this happens to be an ongoing thing, apparently. Uh, in 2018, Kenosha, Wisconsin Sheriff David Beth mentioned how we need to start warehousing criminals to prevent them from breeding in a blatant reference to eugenics. And it just so happened that the people we're speaking about were black. And of course, this sheriff and Kenosha, Wisconsin in general, became a pretty uh, significant point this year in 2020. But anyway, what was the crime that David Beth, or I better say Sheriff David Beth, was addressing? Shoplifting. Specifically, Beth said, we need to stop these males from going out and getting 10 other women pregnant. He also called them the garbage people that fill our communities. According to him at the time, they should be warehoused with no recreational time in the jails. Then, after this generation is gone, he says, they've perished in these buildings, we can turn, we can turn them into something else. Maybe it'll be malls, maybe Amazon will buy them as warehouses later. So in addition to all this, you know, he's looking for ways to profiteer by uh, selling these uh, former warehouse prisons to Amazon. Uh, what a swell guy. So anyway, if, if you look at this, you can see that a lot of this crazy stuff is happening here. You know, the, this guy looks at couple shoplifters and he's coming up with like this eugenics plot in his mind and publicly speaking about it <laughs> you know I mean and here's the thing about shoplifting I'm not gonna you know like really go far out of my way to defend it or anything but that's actually kind of a 
pretty standard crime for teenagers, for young people. You know, uh, it's it's in some cases how people learn that crime is bad because they get in trouble. They get they get a warning because they stole something. Correct? Like, am I being that out of line? Even if it's something like a car, you know, like. Um, a lot of people, that's where they first learn, oh shit, I better not do this kind of stuff in the future. Now again, I'm not a, I'm not like a big shoplifter. Um, I've been, you know, I've, I've possibly been in situations where I could get into trouble, but you know, I've never spent a day in jail. And I, I expect that if I was a, if I was a black person... I might have actually ended up in jail for one reason or another. You know, that's not just a leftist talking point, okay? That's like statistically how a lot of the stuff works out. So I I need to not go into great detail because I know you're itching to know um, more about what I'm actually specifically trying to pinpoint here. The problem is when I mention this kind of stuff, some people just think I want to complain, you know. Uh, meanwhile, many of these same people will whine about how they have the worst back problems ever. And, uh, you know, I can't stand up straight for the life of me and all that. And somehow they will see all these stories as mere abstractions. You know, you could be talking about warfare, people being unjustly and in some cases with zero evidence being thrown in prison or whatever and they'll act as if none of these cases are actually real and only their personal problems are what matter just as a regular person heads to the drugstore in search of some ibuprofen or something to ease the pain a lot of these people often seek out distractions to dull the pain of daily life the last thing want, they want to hear is about how racist and otherwise terrible our society is. They want to not care, and they want to just live a normal life. Looking at the horrors going on is not particularly relaxing, obviously. Um, but at the same time, you know, some of these same people, they want to feel that they're special, that they're the victims, um, if they're being patriotic. And if they support these Republican kind of things, um, and if they support the, you know, the, the Trumpism and all that kind of shit. Unfortunately, they just don't get it unless it's something that happens to them or someone they care about. Or, you know, their Republican Party is officially feeding them that line. And at this point, it's really like the Trump cult. Um... You know, like, it's no longer about just the Republican Party. It's about a certain leader, a former reality TV star host who regularly ogles his daughter on national television. He's somehow their hero. Anyway, this scenario actually reminds me of some quotes from Heart of Darkness. We've all heard the well-known line, The Horror. However, there are plenty of other worthwhile passages which capture our current situation. Here's one. We live as we dream, alone. While the dream disappears, the life continues painfully. Another nice quote is, Even extreme grief, grief may ultimately vent itself in violence, but more generally takes the form of apathy. Also, check this one out. The mind of man is capable of anything. And, you know, that really reminds me of QAnon. <laughs> you know, they, they, they believe in some pretty wild and wooly things, don't they? Like, I'll, I'll never look at the word pizza quite the same again. So, and anyway, when people tell you, I don't care about politics, it roughly pairs with any of these choice Joseph Conrad quotes. It's not necessarily that these people are experiencing trauma firsthand, but they, of, they often don't wish to be around it, to experience it even vicariously. And for some reason, some of them find hope in a figure as disjointed and loony as Donald Trump. 
They would rather not know real problems and be blissfully ignorant. Also, the less they know, the more they can engage in the realities they are comfortable with, and realities that are comfortable with their disengagement. For example, they can pretend that COVID-19 is a liberal hoax and stuff like that. They might feel safer, more secure, and all that by choosing to play the most limited role they can get away with, even as the veneer of normalcy is stripped away around them. The world is not them, they just happen to work here. <laughs>